Happy Friday, everybody. Thanks for joining me for my very first Stitch With Me video. I've been kind of excited to do this all week. I've been looking forward to doing it all week because it has been a busy one. Just like everybody else, I'm sure. I think, uh, you know, our lives, as time goes on, we get busier and busier. So I'm really just pleased to be able to sit down for half an hour with a nice cup of coffee and my stitching and tell you all about it and have a chat and a visit. And uh, I hope that you've got something fun to drink and you're stitching and let's have a little visit. So I am drinking an Americano. We have an espresso machine and so I make the espresso and then I just put boiling water in it with a bit of milk and that's uh, that's my favorite my favorite drink. So I am ready to go. I have my canvas piece here Front of it. I'm gonna be starting. No wait. I thought I'd start actually maybe do a little bit of the fill in here, here and here first. So this one, what I did was I photocopied a little section of the pattern. If you've never done canvas work before, I thought you might be interested to see what uh, what the pattern might look like. I, I didn't I, I didn't think that this really gave anything away. It's it's such a small portion of the, the large scale pattern. I enlarged it by 200% so that you could see. Oh, you know what? I forgot my scissors. I have everything else except my scissors. Just hang on a second. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back again. Scissors make a really good pointer. So you can see that I have this empty space here and there's enough room there for one two three four five lines five lines of stitching so what that looks like on the pattern here if we had to count would be one two three four five so it's something that looks about like that is what I'm going to be following on the pattern itself in order to fill that in so you can see just like cross stitch there are squares, little squares. And each little square on the pattern is a hole. So each square corresponds with one hole on the canvas itself. So I am stitching this way. So my lines will actually look exactly like this. So I would come up in this hole and down in this hole and then I come back over here to the next one and come up here and down here now I know it's that is the proper way to do it sometimes if I'm running a little short on thread I will cheat and I will come to the next hole down here and go back and forth like that that I don't believe is the correct way to do it you are supposed to have double the thread. Now let's let's see my back and let's see whether there were places where I cheated. Let's see. Uh, yep, right there in the corner where you don't see the coverage on the back. I did a little cheat right there, but the rest of this was done correctly there. Okay, so the color that I'm going to be adding in beside the blue here is a watercolors cotton and uh, it's made by Karen and the color is Lexi's blue and this is what it looks like it is beautiful watercolors is such a whoops earthquake believe it or not I have my phone stuck onto a um, one of those daylight pattern holders you know the clamp pattern holders I've actually uh, stuck my phone in it so that is what is recording this video so it may shake a little bit because I'm using the table and the thing is shaking a little bit so you may get a little bit of earthquake going on I will try not to shake the table too much so hopefully it will be okay anyway 
So that's the color. And what you do is, the way it comes, it comes like yarn and it comes, um, you know, in a skein like this, just like DMC. So just like thread, it doesn't have to be like yarn. And it is tied together on one end of the circle. So I leave that little bit, that little end, I leave it tied together and then I come down to where it meets at the end and then I snip those ends apart. So that then what I have is the perfect length of thread for stitching because you can actually use quite a long length when you are doing canvas work. You don't want a really short length because you'll be constantly reloading your needle. And so because I've left that that piece keeping my threads together, I can just choose one from the from the group, pull it free, and the rest is still neat and tidy. So I do use floss away bags and then I just keep my spare, my extra thread just stays in there. Ready for the next one. And the Karen watercolors, it comes in, uh, there are three threads per length. So just like DMC, you separate at the top and I remove one of those strands. And the rest. The rest away. Get my needle threaded. I am using a, I believe it's a number 20. Oops. There's McDreamy. I think it's a number 20 needle. It's fairly good size. That focusing there. There we go. And you don't want to double up too much of the length of thread at the top because if you tend to use your thread right to the very end, this this part of it gets very very worn because of course it's passing through the canvas twice as much. So I've got my length of thread. I come to the back and I have to sew it in. Whoops. I think I'm going to have to come up with another setup. I can tell this whole video is probably going to be very, very shaky. So you sew it through the back and then you do a Bargello tuck. So I'm going to come back through. I'm going to come back through one or two threads to anchor it. There. And then I'm ready to go. It's anchored securely and I'm ready to come back to the front and fill in the blank. So starting here and then down to the corresponding hole on the angle. This color is so beautiful. I'll tell you, when I'm stitching, it's one of the few times that I'm quiet. Someone left me a comment on Monday's video 
I believe her name was Glinda and Glinda suggested that I should do live videos and uh, I thought that was very very kind but I also thought oh dear that would just not not be a good idea for me because I really need uh, to edit myself frequently I don't know about you but sometimes I open my mouth and I speak before I think things through so sometimes it's good to have the capability to edit yourself a little bit so one more I know it's hard to see there but there is still one more stitch needed to fill in so let's see can you see about like that there you go oh you can kind of see one last one fill that in you want to make sure that you take care of any kind of knotting of the thread before it gets too tight. I'm having to hold this a little bit strangely. I'm trying not to knock the table and knock the phone. I think I need a proper tripod. What do you think? See, now that I've said that, it's knotted itself. There we go. That's it. That's that little section done. Now this color is again used to fill in the section here. That's a big distance to jump all the way over there. So what I'm going to do is it should be corresponding over here because they are the same to this section here. I'm just going to double check my pattern. Yep. So, in order to keep it secure, I will run it through some of the stitches at the back to anchor it down so that I don't have a lot of loose thread at the back. Make sure it's neat. And then I'll fill this section in here. Wait a second. Did I go the wrong way? Uh oh no there it is okay so now we're here Another commenter left me a lovely message. Um, on Monday's episode, I showed the witch's wheel that I'd been working on and the really quite terrifying face of that witch. And she commented that when she stitches faces, she always leaves the face until last so that, so that it's not staring at her. And I thought, you know, that's actually quite a good idea. Sometimes these colors blend very well and it's hard to actually count. Let's count from the silver. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. There we go. That's five. There. So. It's filling in nicely. So what I'm going to do, it's difficult I because I talk so much and I get distracted so easily it is a challenge for me actually I'm finding to stitch and talk to you at the same time so I'm gonna load up my needle with um, this 
dark blue color on the outside because I think I can zip down here quite easily without having to worry that I'm gonna make a big mistake. Okay, so that's anchored. If you, if you anchor it properly under stitches that are closer together, there's no need to do a Bargello tuck. You can if you want, nothing wrong with being better safe than sorry, um, but that was quite secure. I'm not worried about that coming out. Okay, so for now I'm done with Lexi's Blue, so I'm gonna pop that over with the remainder, and I'm going to then get some of that beautiful blue. This is another Karen watercolors. There's a full skein there. And this is the indigo. And it is probably my one of my favorite of the Karen colors because it is just so rich looking and, and uh, gorgeous. So my thread out. So, confession time. Who else licks their thread to thread their needle? Because I do. I know you're not supposed to, but I do it anyways. I'm a rebel. Oh, I love this color. quiet for the next couple of minutes that's my chair I'm gonna be quiet for the next couple of minutes and I'm gonna zip down here so that you can see for yourself how fast this goes and I'm and it's even faster when I'm not trying to record myself because I'm holding my canvas a little bit strangely and I'm also worried about knocking the table or the thing that's holding the camera so normally it's even a little faster design. Oh, I know I said I was going to be quiet. I don't think it's possible. I want to tell you all about my dogs. I have two dogs. I have a golden retriever, Daria. Trust me, it's a funny name. We did not name her that. She came with that name uh, from the from the people that we adopted her from. She was five when we adopted her. Uh, she was a she was a show dog that um, had been bred once and then the breeder found out that her grandfather had a degenerative eye disease that was genetic and Daria could possibly be a carrier of this uh, disease so they weren't going to breed her again. She was retired from being a show dog so they um, they frequently would adopt out their older dogs who they felt would do better um, in houses where they would have more attention. Retrievers are very, very sociable animals. And ours especially is much more, oh, wait a second. You see, this is why I shouldn't talk and stitch because look what I'm supposed to do. Do you see this part of the pattern here? 
how it's it's hard to see there I'll angle it these ones go this way and these ones go this way yeah oops I was just happily flying down the side here and I completely forgot that I have to change the angle of my stitching so let's rip it out anyways oh my goodness see talking gets me into trouble every time I try to be careful when I rip it out because the Karen can be um, kind of like not pill like wool does but it can start to look a little worn if you overuse it or overwork it and so that's why you know you may be tempted to use a really really long length but um, the more it goes through the canvas the more use it gets and it doesn't quite look it doesn't lie as flat it's not as clean or as tidy so the less you can overuse it the better so I think I just have to do one more here yeah okay so anyways uh, so Daria was five when we adopted her and she is now 11 and I adore her our other dog is a beagle who was also he was a rescue we adopted him from a rescue agency and we really have no idea how old he is he was definitely a senior when we adopted him um, the vet figures that he was at least eight years old and that was around the same time that Daria was about eight. So we just we just assume they're approximately the same age. So they're both about 11, two senior dogs. We had a cat um, and we lost him last summer, Oscar. He was a ginger tom and oh, I miss him. I really miss him. My daughter is quite allergic to cats. Uh, the, the, her doctor said that it, you know, probably was okay since we'd had Oscar from the time she was little little but it probably wasn't a good idea for us to oh, can you see that probably wasn't a great idea for us to get another cat so too too bad for us okay so that is the end of that corner and now you can see I've finished it off properly and now I have to start going the other way to do this side of it so think there there we go that's better I had to laugh when I was editing the uh, Monday's video and I saw the coffee cup at the beginning you know I know full well how big that cup is the cup that we call the go diva cup I know it's enormous but I literally sat there laughing my head off when I saw myself drinking from it because it is ridiculous. It is literally the most ridiculous mug I've ever seen in my whole life. So most likely you will not see me drinking from that mug again in these videos because that was uh, frankly a little embarrassing. So I have a much smaller mug today. See, I know, and I should never hold it over my stitching. Don't do this at home. Isn't that terrible? I'm a terrible stitcher. Mm. Anyway. So, two dogs. I have two kids. My daughter, Sarah, is 16 and a half. My son, Nicholas, is nine. And I adore them. They are really really wonderful kids I lucked out in the kid department Sarah is now driving she loves to drive she'd drive all the time if I let her Nicholas is in grade four and uh, his little public school is right down the road from where we live so we're able to walk to school we have a, a lovely neighborhood where we live here in London London Ontario great neighborhood very friendly um, nice neighbors isn't 
Isn't this quick? Oh my goodness, it's so quick. I love it. So I've been doing a lot of sewing this week um, for the for Evertote, and so I've been watching a lot of floss tube videos. And the one floss tuber that who's who's been keeping me company, uh, I've sort of just you know clicked on her videos and let them play through because she really is just lovely company. Is a stitch too far? And she is in the Netherlands, and. I I just think I love just putting her on her videos on while I'm working because it's like having someone who's just like me a, another crafter over for you know a coffee while I'm working and it's like we're visiting I also want one of my favorite reasons that I like listening to her also, as well as um, there's another floss tuber who I really enjoy, Darling Bluebell. If you, uh, a, a lot of people already know of these two floss tubers because I think they've been they've been around for quite a while and their channels are quite popular. But and there's a reason because they're just lovely to watch and listen to. But Darling Bluebell as well is originally from the Netherlands, and their accents when they speak English. I have, um, if you've watched the Fiber Friends podcast, we sort of have a, a resident knitwear designer. Her name is Josh, and she is from the Netherlands. She lives in the Netherlands with her family. And Josh and I have known each other for maybe a couple of years now through Instagram. I'm going to flip this so you can actually see what I'm doing. That would help, wouldn't it? There we go. Boy, oh boy. Let's hope these videos get better over time. Uh, Josh. Josh is from the Netherlands. And I have never spoken to Josh in real life. We've only ever communicated. Oh, I keep knocking that. Sorry. We've only communicated through Instagram or email or um, actually, no, that's it. And when I hear... A stitch too far or darling bluebell when I hear them talking I imagine that's what Josh's voice sounds like when she speaks English and I find it thoroughly charming let's see how are we doing here almost at the end of the thread this is a just a wooden frame canvas for the canvas and it is stapled to the back. Neil at Thread and I prepares it for me because I ask him really nicely and uh, he does a great job. But it is what I keep knocking the, the stand with that's holding the camera. So that's, what, oh, if I hold it this way, it's a little closer there. So another weekend is here. Do you have any special plans for your weekend? Probably lots of stitching, I'm assuming. That's what I have planned. Lots of sewing, lots of stitching, lots of knitting, and just hanging out with my family. This weekend is the first time in a very, very long time that all four of us are actually going to be home at the same time. My husband is away at the moment uh, on a business trip in Chicago with his partner, but they are gonna be home tonight, later, and then for the rest of the weekend, the four of us will get to spend some time together, which doesn't happen all that often anymore because we're all very, very busy. Okay, so time to end that thread.
think that's pretty quick. All right, so I think that I'm gonna leave that at that for my very first Stitch With Me video because I think I need to figure out a better solution for a tripod, maybe an actual honest to goodness tripod that can hold the, <laughs> the phone or the iPad. I find that they take very good video. I've been very pleased with the quality of video from, from my iPhone. Um, I, but I do need a proper, a proper tripod. This I thought would work for today and because I don't have one, today was a sort of just make do with what I've got. Um, but I do think a proper tripod would give us a better result and I, I really, I'm sorry for the, uh, all of the motion of the video because I did knock it a fair bit while I was working there. Anyway, oh, I could just spend the rest of the weekend in my pajamas doing nothing but this design until it's done. But the unfortunate thing about canvas work, and I know I've said this before, is that it is very, very hard on my arm because the canvas is stiff and you have to use a fair bit of, of force to pull the needle through. I do occasionally use a small piece of leather on my fingers uh, to, help, to help put some uh, pressure on the needle while I pull it out, but I, I couldn't find my, my little leather piece before I started recording today. So if I find that you know sometimes I just have to get on and do these things otherwise I keep thinking of other things that need to be done or ways that I can make it better and it just won't happen I just won't record the video so I hope that you have I hope you bared with me today and you know every time that I do this I hope to improve a little bit and I hope that you got a few stitches into your own project and maybe weren't too distracted by my pretty blue colors that I was working on beside you and with you and I hope you have a wonderful weekend I'll uh, I'll see you on Monday happy stitching <laughs>